Isn't it fascinating how variables never fail to find their way into the lives of organic life forms? I have no interest in the Harmony's celebration, so it's only natural for me to turn down the invitation. But it looks like my decision also cost me the front row seat to all of your exciting adventures. Conclusion, there is likewise a downside to pursuing reason. I hear that the Astral Express has established a collaboration with the Garden of Recollection for your next destination. Could there be more to it? Logic. The average Pathstrider wouldn't leave any trace behind in the Garden of Recollection's mirror. It's a pity we do not communicate much within the Society. Not to mention we've lost most of our members to the Lord of Silence. I have never heard of Amphorius, however. That Foxian girl has indeed been through an unimaginable turn of events. I suppose that's the fate you organic life forms are bound by. So, is it out of goodwill that the Astral Express volunteered to send her back home? Looks like this is one exceptional passenger. Don't you have to accompany her then, Miss Himako? So, is anyone gonna tell me what's going on? March? What's your take on this? 
the dreamscape is a memoria world. It is likely the candy triggered her hypersensitive mind, causing scattered memory fragments to dissociate and become entities themselves. There is no cause for concern. We've experienced similar incidents from time to time in the sweet dream. Mr. Yang? Who is this? It's okay. You can reveal yourself now. I was only being careful. Or we would have been stopped by the bloodhounds more than once on our way here. Help me remove my disguise. One week. It's been a while, everyone. Everyone, stay calm. Uh, I'll explain. I believe that at this point, Sunday has no reason to be dishonest. But to prevent any unforeseen complications, I'll be accompanying him everywhere he goes until he leaves Panacone. Mr. One Week here is an old acquaintance of Sunday's. Pleased to meet you, fair lady. And you, of course. You're the heavyweight who pummeled this control freak. Mm, the surprises just keep pouring in. First there was Miss Acheron, and then Miss Ting Yoon. Why does it seem like Mr. Yang always comes back with some extraordinary guests? <clears throat> Let's leave this discussion for later. For now, we should be focusing on returning Miss Ting Yoon to her normal self. Uh, that's not gonna be easy. You'll see what I mean, Mr. Yang. These Ting Yoons aren't exactly easy to communicate with. March 7th. Have you taken the time to consider my suggestion? Your suggestion? Oh, wait. Which Miss Ting Yoon are you again? It's me! I'm the one who wants every Ting Yoon to come together to form the Ting Yoon Merchant Guild. How often do you get the chance to work with yourself? Just imagine how in sync we'll be with one another. We're bound to thrive and prosper. No, we can't leave the dreamscape to trade with the outside world, so that's where you come in, Miss March 7th. Your wits surpass many others, making you the perfect person to handle liaison negotiations on our behalf. Uh, <laughs> I guess I can consider it. I hope everything goes smoothly for your guild. Uh, there. Now do you see what I mean, Mr. Yang? There does appear to be an element of her talking to herself. Hey! You better not be referring to the part about my wits surpassing many others. Mr. Yang mentioned the Express's next voyage is to send a passenger back home. Could this lady be from the Sienjo Alliance? Yes. Uh, more specifically, the Sienjo Lawfu. The Law Fu? Didn't the Antimatter Legion launch an ambush on the Law Fu some time ago? Was she one of the few survivors? Quite the contrary. She might have been the person closest to the Eye of the Storm. Hmm. Looks like there's a lot more to this story. A uh, story for another time. As host of the Dreamscape, do you have any suggestions for fixing this problem? I don't have much to go on now. Perhaps we should talk to the other Miss Ting Yoons here. That sounds nice. People never forget a personally prepared home-cooked meal.
but then again, gifts should be lasting. What about a delightful new bouquet of flowers on the table each day? Wouldn't they do a better job at brightening up someone's day? Hmm, that sounds like a good idea. Um, if we really want to do this right though, it's the thought behind the gift that truly matters. The more thought goes into the gift, the better the recipient feels it. Hmm, she makes a valid point too. You sure have a way of not offending anyone. These three Tingyuns don't look like they'll be reaching a conclusion anytime soon. We won't be able to get a word in. So, what do you think, Sunny? Uh, let's try a different name, my dear friend. Oh, don't we sound chummier that way? I took a leaf out of this Foxian girl's book. The problem with Miss Ting Yoon is just as I suspected before. That prank shattered her into notes that are each a part of her. In other words, it means the Ting Yoons we see here are all different aspects of her psyche. Okay... You just made it sound a whole lot more complicated. At any rate, this is a known occurrence across the dreamscape. Tuning could be the way to fix it. The only problem is that these Miss Ting Yoons are too caught up in their own world. Is there one we can properly speak with? One that we can speak with? Oh, I think there is one! But it may take me a while to identify her. Perfectly fine on her own. The childlike innocence that adults have is a lot more resilient than you can imagine. Even if that's true, it doesn't apply to her. Oh, were you all looking for me? Oh, were you all looking for me? <sighs> Found her! Uh, if I remember correctly, this Miss Ting Yoon's trait is... Uh, it's nothing special, really. Uh, she ought to meet your one we can properly speak with requirement, right? Worth a try. My lady, if I may, I wish to perform a tuning on you. Uh, before you start... You should know that we're keeping our eyes on you. If you even think about taking Miss Ting Yoon hostage. It is not my intention to provoke you. Perhaps, as assurance, we can have my friend here perform the task in my stead. One week has a higher mastery of the harmony than I do. That is true. If you still have concerns, you are also free to restrain me while he performs the tuning. Um, there's no need for that. You're acting so... sincere. I'm actually surprised. Are you alright with this, Miss Tingyu? Hmm, I go as the wind blows, so you may decide for me. 
Then kindly forgive our intrusion. Please do your best, One Week. Properly? Nothing. Just a trivial matter. What do you sense? I should have let you handle it yourself. This girl is not as ordinary as she appears. I nearly died. Just now. Don't be afraid. What is this place? No matter what you see, you only need to remember one thing. You're not alone. Who? Are you? And who am I? Is is that where I came from? And where does this path lead? Life support pod is ready. They were only minor issues. That's great. Otherwise, that person from the Xianzhou might not be able to hold on much longer. You're still trying. There's no precedent for saving someone who was destroyed by a Lord Ravager. Will it even work? I'm not a genius, so I don't understand the logic behind it. But if she says it's possible, then it must be. Uh, excuse me. Could you tell me where I am? Can they not hear me? These are... 
These are wounds left by the destruction. They have taken root within your body and cannot be removed. The... destruction? I don't understand. Please, who are you? And why won't you show yourself? I can't go to you. All I can do is wait for you to finish walking this path. You want me to go through here? Do I have to fight it? There's no need for that. It's too dangerous, and you can't do it anyway. Don't fight it. Embrace it. Try to coexist with it. Think of it as feeling your own scars. My scars? Uh, uh, wait! Is this called... coexisting? Don't worry. As I said before, you're not alone. I'm honored, since you're already here. Why not have a meal before you leave? Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. Cut in the net. I'll see you back. Relax. Ill tidings manifest. <laughs> Memories beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. Cut in the net. You chose. <laughs> Stand still. A little more heat. Death. <laughs> Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. Relax. <laughs> Ill fate descends. How can it be? Why are there still so many of them? from before weren't defeated either? As I said before, you can't defeat them. No one can. You can fall into the darkness and die alongside these scars of the destruction. Or bring them with you when you return to the world here. These are your two choices. Return to the world? What are you saying? Oh, no wonder those two ignored me. Am I just a wandering spirit now? Close, but not quite. Trapped between life and death? Existing in a limbo? You can think of it that way. Based on what you said, even if I should wake up, these wounds that caused my death will remain on my body and never heal? I don't understand. You appear to be trying to save me, Benefactor. But why are you telling me all this? It's a habit of mine. I believe everyone should have the right to choose whether they wish to return to this world or not. Be that as it may, I don't remember anything. There's nothing to help me make a choice. That doesn't matter. I believe the desire to live 
was born from nothing to begin with. <sighs> you may also prove yourself to be the exception. I would also be pleased with that result. How troublesome. But I suppose that's part of living. Survival or destruction is no longer a choice for you. And they both now grow along the same path. And only by walking this path will you break through the darkness and arrive at my side. Feeling more awake? Congratulations. You attained your very first victory in this tug of war. It's a good start. Uh, I... This is... Let me explain. You were attacked by a Lord Ravager. By all rights, you should not have survived. But someone didn't agree with that assessment, and it just so happens, I was able to fulfill his request. What about the other merchants? I don't know. <sighs> Why me? Because you were the most unfortunate. You fell into the hands of that Lord Ravager, who destroyed your body and spirit. Yet, you are also the most fortunate. Her desire to claim everything about you for herself meant she needed time, so you were spared instant annihilation. There is only a fine line between resurrection and escaping death. Yet, they couldn't be more different. If you had truly died, I would have been powerless to do anything for you. Uh, my body feels strange. I'm sorry. I can't let you regain your ability to feel just yet. You'd be in excruciating pain. Your body was contaminated by the destruction and suffered severe damage. As I said before, these wounds will stay with you for the rest of your life. To prevent its resurgence, I made some minor modifications to your body. Or more specifically, your tail. You'll have to learn to adapt to it. Unfortunately, the inescapable price of survival is often more adversity. <sighs> Regardless, I'm grateful to you for saving my life. There's no need for that. This was merely a transaction. With this, the debt between the traveling merchant and me is clear. <sighs> Who? Don't worry about it. You should sleep for a little longer. By the time you wake up, you won't remember any of these details. I'll arrange for someone to send you home. Which reminds me, you seem to have some dependable friends with close ties to you. You should go with them. It can only help with your recovery to hear more about your past. One week instead. This is no ordinary woman. I suppose there's no point in hiding it from you anymore. Uh, Miss Ting Yun is originally from the Xianzhou. 
she had an unfortunate encounter with a Lord Ravager who robbed her of her identity and left her on the verge of death. While she miraculously escaped with her life, her body suffered terrible injuries beyond all power to heal. But something happened to change that outcome? Yes, uh, a genius got involved. She's very accomplished in the field of life sciences and managed to grant Miss Tingyun a shot at survival. After that, she asked the Express to escort Miss Tingyun back home. We made a stop at Panacone along the way, uh, partly to allow her some time to convalesce. I'm so sorry. I thought no one would be affected if I hid inside a dream. I... I didn't expect so many mishaps to happen. That's all right. So long as nobody was hurt. Can I get something to drink? I feel like I've been asleep for ten years. That's fine. We should find another place to talk anyway. We drew some attention with that commotion earlier. So glad again. I'm a local, you know. You'll have to make do. In any case, I must thank the both of you for your assistance. It was nothing. Now that the matter with Miss Ting Yoon is resolved, are we meeting your other two companions next? There's no need for that. Mr. One Week is in poor condition, so let's wrap up your farewells first. I'll leave Miss Ting Yoon in your hands. Uh huh. But, Mr. Yang, the messenger from the Sienjo is almost here. You're not coming with us? I trust that you can handle it. Besides, Himiko will be there. She'll be able to handle any decisions should you run into any difficulties. Okay. We better hurry then. Shall we keep going then? Do you forget already? Miss Ting Yoon is going back to the Alliance, so we're here to help her pick out souvenirs. I'm not too familiar with this planet. I'm worried an unscrupulous cutthroat merchant will try to take advantage of me. Uh, luckily, the people I want to buy these gifts for are friends you already know on the Sienjo. So I'll be counting on both your stakeholder intuitions for recommendations. <laughs> As if a merchant could seriously take advantage of you. Oh, I already picked up a few gifts earlier. So that means there's only three more left to go. But we've already lost a lot of time, so we better not drag our feet. Welcome! How can I help you? Hello there. It's my first time visiting the Dreamscape, so I wanted to buy some local specialties as souvenirs for my friends back home. My two friends here are more familiar with the dreamscape and recommended your shop, so I'm here to take a look. Why, you really know how to flatter. Go ahead, browse all you like. Mm, first we have Lady Fuxuan of the Divination Commission. What do you think best suits her? Lady Fuxuan has such refined taste. The Xianzhou really has changed a lot in the time I've been asleep. Let's go with your suggestion. Next is General Jing Yuan. Uh, seriously? Now that the Alliance has all of you there to help them, sending any elite fighters more would just be overkill. to make <laughs> that's the kind of treasure i've always yearned for but the general's position won't allow him to accept such a gift come to clock studios theme park to learn more about the history of the planet of festivities <laughs> i think the general will like this gift 
Finally, we have Lady Bai Lu of the Alchemy Commission. She loves excitement. That's a good idea. It might be commonplace, but it's still the specialty of Fenaconi. It would make for an ideal gift to bring home. That's all of them. Please wrap them up for me. Thanks to both your help, everything went smoother than I expected. And it looks like we still have some time to spare. Why don't we pay another visit to the Dreamscape sales store? You can find memory bubbles pretty much anywhere. But Penacony's dream bubbles are extraordinary. Even if we don't get them as gifts, we can keep them as souvenirs for ourselves. A souvenir for myself? That's definitely an idea I can get behind. But there's one more thing I wish to do. Since this is our last stop, could I have a word with you two in private? Perhaps somewhere more secluded. I'd like to discuss a personal matter. Everything you want, we have it all. This is a good spot. Miss Ting Yoon? What's this about? You've looked out for me during our travels together these past few days. I'm truly grateful and can't thank you enough. But there are some things I find difficult to forget. I feel it's only right that I tell you what's on my mind before we part ways. Do you too still remember what it was like when you first saw me? How could we forget? She was so shocked. She was frozen in place when she shouted. Exactly. And that's precisely why I haven't been able to shake off this strange feeling in the days since I started traveling with you. When I asked for your names, I couldn't help but think that this first encounter was actually a long-awaited reunion for you. I've heard about what happened to you on the Xianzhou. And I've got to admit that Fentilia's disguise was so perfect, it was like another me tricking everyone. Yeah, we couldn't even tell when you were replaced by Fantilia. I figured it happened when we were after Kafka. You vanished for a while. I thought you must have come back as a double. <laughs> but it was much earlier than that. That thought has me filled with sorrow. As if a piece of my life had been stolen away, and I had no part in it. That's what I've been puzzled about, too. I never actually saw how Fantilia managed to disguise herself as me. What was your impression of that Tingyun, if you recall? Mm, that's just the nature of the Foxians. It's widely known that mystery is the key to our allure. So, what did she seem like to you? Oh, is that a compliment? Mm, I'm not sure if I'm deserving of that title. Was there... anything particularly memorable? That's true. I'd love to learn how you do it. <laughs> now the final question. In your eyes, am I... Just like the Ting Yun you remember? Wait, don't you find that question a bit weird? You're the real Ting Yun. Why compare yourself to an imposter? Oh, Miss March, you might have the wrong idea. I'm just feeling a mix of regret and relief. Uh huh? <laughs> As a merchant, staying well-informed is crucial. 
It's only natural for me to stay updated on the events of the Lafu before I return. If I had rushed in and out back then, I wouldn't have been much help. Instead, I would have postponed the trip and sought assistance from allies, but in that case... We wouldn't have crossed paths. Exactly. Based on your description, that Lord Ravager was indeed cunning. Her demeanor mirrored mine so closely that it felt like she was living my life for a few days, rather than merely disguising herself. I regret missing out on your Sanjo journey. But everything that unfolded afterward, aside from the scheming, played out exactly as if I'd been there. This leads me to consider another possibility. Fantilia had stolen a piece of my life, and a Foxian always gets even. I will not be taken advantage of. I must take something back from her as well. But after thinking it over, the only thing that could be considered equal value is the bond I have with all of you. That thought has brought me great comfort. And now I know how to speak to you properly. We've never even met before, and here you are, offering your help, just as before. I should have treated you with respect, but... Fear of Fantilia made me act like somebody else. And now... I will reclaim everything I have lost. And it should begin with a proper acknowledgement. Dear benefactors, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to you. <laughs> Looks like we're off to a good start. Moving forward, I'll definitely be trying more things like this from now on. And you, my dear benefactors, will be my source of courage. Miss Ting Yoon, that's way too over the top. Just don't make any risky decisions. It might overwhelm her. <laughs> we'll see. I just hope the Ting Yoon in your memories won't be tainted by Fantilia anymore. All right, no more questions. I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Let's continue on our way. The dream of our Welcome to the Dreamscape Sales Store. Dr. Edward at your service. We're looking for some dreams to give us gifts. Something exotic and preferably captivating. Uh, just a friendly reminder. Being too picky won't help you find the best dream. Just to dampen your spirits ahead of time. That being said, there are always some lucky exceptions. Why not too long ago I procured a dream bubble that sounds perfectly. The story unfolds in the Shenzhou Alliance, where a young swordmaster strives to become the sword champion. However, this junior Foxian sword just turns a hundred, puts him in a tough spot. Why does that sound oddly familiar? Hmm. Since I'm returning to the Sienjo, I think it's better to choose something unrelated to the Alliance. Feel free to pick a few for me. I love customers like you. So easy to work. So easy to take advantage of, you mean? Just don't pick anything weird, okay? <laughs> oh, speaking of dreamscapes, I have a gift for you, my benefactors. After troubling you all this time, I couldn't leave without properly expressing my thanks. Here's a dream bubble for you. I hope you enjoy it. Wow. That's really nice of you. Here are the dream bubbles I've prepared. Thank you for your business. Well, it looks like everything's finally in order. I suppose it's time to head back. Uh, I can't believe it's time for 
Miss Ting Yoon to leave. I'm not ready to say goodbye. Yeah, we got delayed on the way. And Mr. Yang will explain in detail when he gets back. Has the messenger from the Sienjo arrived yet? Long time no see, everyone. <laughs> Madame Yukong? I've imagined this moment many times. I was worried I might embarrass myself in front of you. I even rehearsed every word beforehand. Now it seems it was unnecessary. Ting Yun, I'm here to take you home. Madame Yukong, I wasn't expecting it to be you. What a wonderful surprise. I wanted to come because, after all, it's you who's coming home. Yeah, me of all people. Your body. It's going to be tough from now on, isn't it? I've already escaped death once. What more could I ask for? Also, it's not all bad. I might even beat you at arm wrestling now. You're still the same. Carefree as always. I have a lot I'd like to tell you, but I'll save it for the road. It's a long journey back to the La Fu. Even if we can't completely rid you of the pain, there must be ways to alleviate it on the Sienjo. Hmm. I have no doubt. But... Since we're alone here, may I ask you one more thing? Do I really have to go back to the Lafu? Why? You don't want to? <sighs> Despite Fantilia's ruthlessness, she spared me when I should have been eliminated. And why did Miss Ron May, who has no ties to the Xianjo, go out of her way to save me? It seems as if I've become a pawn in someone else's game. There are people within the Alliance who also believe that the suspect is now on the Yu Chua. If that's the case, it's all the more reason for me not to return to the Lafu and complicate things. I might as well take advantage of this situation. Take advantage of the situation? What do you mean? Right now? The marks of ruin inside me maintain a delicate balance. Moreover, they were created by Fantilia herself. If possible, please inform the General, and arrange for me to meet with the Marshal. Maybe this body of mine can help the Alliance get one step closer to the Xianzhou's enemies. <sighs> when Ron Mei visited the La Fu earlier, she mentioned what happened to you. This coincided with when the message sent by the Astral Express arrived. The Arbiter Generals concluded that Fentilia did not intend for you to survive. If utilized strategically, this could give the Alliance an element of surprise. If we follow this plan, we must keep your resurrection hidden. But before making any decisions, I want to know what you think. If you wish to go home, I'll support you, no matter what others may say. Then I'm glad. I shall save you the trouble of hearing what those people may say. The road ahead is perilous. 
If you decide to take it, I won't stop you. Maybe I'm being selfish, but I still want to know. Are you choosing this because it's what you really want? I've come to see myself clearly in this dream journey. Perhaps it's what people call a blessing in disguise. There is someone who can attest to my true intentions. Please follow me. She should be around here somewhere. <laughs> is that... <sighs> After a strange encounter, I was fragmented into multiple Tingyuns, each embodying a different aspect of my memories. One of them hasn't returned to me because she ventured too far. Until now. You mean her? What is she doing? <sighs> She's captivated by something that has deeply mesmerized me. As a fleeting emotion, she's no different from a newborn. Her boarding this ship was solely down to her inner impulse. Madam Yukon, do you remember? Perhaps that was just an ordinary flight for you, but for a certain child, that was her first experience with the sky. <sighs> of course I remember. Back then, you were still young enough for me to carry. You probably still can. Want to give it a try? <laughs> I'm afraid you'd be too heavy for me now. Just kidding. I remember you kept begging me to take you to the Star Skiff, and even dreamed of becoming a pilot. But once you were airborne, you were so nervous that you clung to others for dear life. This flight was a turning point in my life. The boundless cosmos unfolded before me. I was completely mesmerized. Not just by the view, but by your realization. In this world, there are paths beyond waiting for us to explore. Even though I lacked the talent to pilot the Star Skiff and wasn't much of a warrior, I still chose to travel around with the Merchant Guild. Even to this day, this thrill still courses through me. That hasn't changed? Never. Now I can embark once more on my journey as a traveler of no return, exploring the paths that lie beyond. Speaking of which, how are things with the Whistling Flames? I've left Yan Ming in charge for now. He's reliable. But he can be a bit extreme, and might not always follow your principles as a traveling merchant. <laughs> My principles. Hmm. Forsake what others fight for, and take what others abandon. That's the way to navigate the world and achieve my goals. <laughs> I will continue to uphold my principles. But... Now, I've also learned that while these merchant principles may apply to humans, they falter in the face of the gods. But this shouldn't fall on your shoulders to begin with. You are simply an innocent survivor in this war. Madame Yukon, you were once a survivor in the war too, weren't you? <sighs> In a hazy dream, I vaguely remember someone telling me that the inescapable price of survival is often more adversity. But... Madame Yukon, the gods use humans as pawns in their cosmic game. 
sacrificing countless innocent souls. Have you ever thought about making them pay? Every moment of every day. But as inconsequential as we are, how can we escape the fate of being mere pawns? If I could choose, I would never want you to become a pawn. I just wish you could still be that carefree little fox. Not caught up in this war. Don't be disheartened, Madame Yukon. Thanks to the favor of the Lord Ravager, I've become a player in this game. Remember, it's often the unassuming pawns, the lone traveler, or the worm that subdues the dragon, that leave even the best strategists helpless. So, now I'll become a cunning speck of dust, and make those masterminds behind the curtains sneeze a few times. Mm -hmm.